Here's everything new coming to Apple TV with tvOS 16. What's happening today, everybody? It is Andrew here from Apple Insider, and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. If you have not done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss a single video. In today's video, I'm going to be walking through everything that is new and updated in tvOS 16 for Apple TV. I'm going to walk you through the new features and API changes, and at the end, I'll give you some information on availability and supported models. Now we have our Apple TV 4K connected to our Samsung M8 Smart Monitor. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. The first thing that excites me a lot about tvOS 16 is Apple is bringing more support for gaming controllers to its set-top box. This could mean a variety of things. Aside from Apple just doubling down on controller support, we could hopefully see some improvements to Apple's gaming situation and Apple Arcade in the future. Specifically, what is nice is Apple is calling out support for Nintendo controllers. So we'll have support for both Joy-Cons as well as the Pro Controller on Apple TVs. This functionality appears to work with Apple's other platforms as well, so you can use it on your iPhones and your iPad and your Mac, but it's great to be able to use it on your television, where I think a lot of games are meant to be played. A small UI change coming this time in the Apple TV app there are now these rich video previews that can play to help you discover your next favorite Apple TV Plus original. So this is just a row of featured content in the TV app and now there's these rich videos that will play behind it as you look through the various options that are available. Just a neat way to highlight Apple's original content. Originally when tvOS 16 was announced alongside Apple's other platforms, Apple touted HDR10 Plus support. Now, if you're not familiar with the different specs for HDR, there's a variety of them out there. The common ones being HDR10, HDR10 Plus, and Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is the best out of all of them. It's an extraordinary uh, HDR format that many of the high manufacturers support, including Apple. In fact, using an iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, you can record in Dolby Vision HDR, and it looks amazing. But some manufacturers do not support Dolby Vision because its requirements are quite high. Additionally, they don't like to be bound by this very specific set of rules and specs for HDR content. So some, like Samsung, have rebuffed Dolby Vision and instead are supporting HDR10 or HDR10+, Plus or their own proprietary versions of HDR. These other versions, they have a bit looser specs, but Apple will now be supporting HDR10 Plus on Apple TV as well as other platforms. What's nice about this is that you should be able to get some great looking HDR content on televisions that do not support Dolby Vision. Now, even after Apple made this announcement though, it seems like many uh, references to HDR10 Plus have been removed from Apple's pages and development forms. So it's going to be interesting. It looks like maybe just could be delayed to come out in the future. So don't, don't count on this yet. But if it does come to fruition with the launch of TUS 16, it's going to be a nice thing to have for anyone who doesn't have a Dolby Vision TV that still supports HDR. For anybody that is using Apple Fitness Plus and their Apple Watch to work out on their Apple TV, there's a nice update coming to the fitness app. Now, other intensities can be shown on screen. So right now Apple has these call outs like hard hit areas that you need to go all out or something or your different metrics throughout your workout. Apple will now be showing the intensity on screen and it can go between easy, moderate, hard, and all out. Those are the four different levels of intensity that can now be called out on screen during your Apple fitness workout. I need to interject for just one moment to thank a sponsor for this video and making it happen. Once again, Vogduo. Vogduo makes some of the greatest accessories for your iPhone, your iPad, your Mac, and your Apple Watch. And they've recently launched their MWC 100 3-in-1 wireless charger. And it's unbelievably cool. 
Here's a quick demo of the three-in-one charger here. So obviously it has this all leather design. We have our glass charging surface here on the left-hand side with a status light underneath. When your phone's placed there, it'll turn blue. If you don't want a status light, tap a button and it can disappear. We can go ahead and place our iPhone on here and begin charging right away. If it is helpful, you can even prop up this stand and watch your phone in the landscape mode. If you're watching a video bedside, anything like that, it is very handy to do. Go ahead and place our iPhone back on there. We have a second charging surface here on the right. We can set our AirPods and charge them. And if you have an Apple Watch, this slides out on the right hand side, can lay flat or pop it up and you can slap your Apple Watch there in nightstand mode. Another great feature. It includes both a USB-C cable and an additional extension cable. So you can extend this out to 6.6 .6 feet, nylon braided with metal ends. This is such a cool wireless charger from Vogduo. Vogduo is only producing 200 of its MWC 100 three-in-one wireless charger. So if you want to pick one up, there is a link for it down below in the description. And just for you guys, for my audience, you guys can secure $20 off using the promo code AI20, which again is linked or written down below in the description. Thank you again to Vogduo for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back to our content. Anybody who knows me knows I am a huge proponent of the smart home, especially Apple's HomeKit. And this fall, we are expecting a big update to the smart home with the launch of Matter. Matter is a new smart home standard that aims to unify the smart home. A device can be certified in Matter and work across the board with all major platforms. So once a device is certified in Matter, it can work with Amazon's Assistant, Google Home, Samsung SmartThings, as well as Apple's HomeKit, or as Apple is now calling it, just Apple Home. But once Matter launches, it's going to be a great thing for the industry and hopefully will move the entire industry forward. Apple has supported Matter in beta with tvOS 15, and Matter is set to launch this fall, and Apple will fully support it with tvOS 16 when it becomes finally available. Another change that Apple has been touting with tvOS 16 is improved or new cross-device compatibility. So Apple's officially kind of using this already with Apple Fitness. When you go to do a workout, it pops up on screen, your Apple Watch will be discovered and you can continue and connect right here on your Apple Watch. It's great to do. And now Apple's making this easier for third-party developers. Here's exactly what Apple says on this new cross-device compatibility. Integrate your tvOS app with iOS, iPadOS, or watchOS app to unlock new experiences on Apple TV. For example, you can deliver more personalized workouts on Apple TV based on motion sensor data from your Apple Watch. Display real-time information on iPhone while media plays in your app on Apple TV or include more screens for gameplay. So we should see multiple uses of this new cross-device compatibility in multiple genres, in games, video apps, and workout apps. It's pretty cool to see what developers will do with this new API. Here's a few other changes that I saw with tvOS 16. When you go into settings and under general, there is now a new option to toggle between 12 hour or 24 hour time formats. If you go under accessibility, there's this new option for hover text, making it easier to see what is on screen. Inside of Control Center, it will now automatically suggest other members of the family to add as different users for the Apple TV. And Apple is bringing more Swift UI elements to developers, including different styles of buttons and UI elements that they can use in creating their applications, which overall should improve the quality of apps on Apple TV. So let's go ahead and talk about availability and what devices tvOS 16 will support. Officially, tvOS 16 will run on Apple TV HD, Apple TV 4th generation, Apple TV 4K, and the second generation Apple TV 4K. Those are the four devices of Apple TV that tvOS 16 will support. tvOS 16 is set to be released this fall as a free update for existing users. That means it's going to probably launch alongside Apple's other new platforms, including iOS 16, iPadOS 16, watchOS 9, and macOS Ventura, though macOS Ventura might be a little behind. It'll also coincide with the release of the HomePod 16 update that is also expected to be released and have some of the similar support, including Matter support when it's released alongside these other platforms. 
So let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is a big enough update for Apple TV and tvOS, or do you think Apple should be doing more? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. And stay tuned, I have a lot more videos heading your way.